This is a production of Cornell University. Thank you very much, Mark. And this is also my extraordinary uh, honors to be here in Cornell. I would explain to you later on in one slide why. Please wait for that. And I'd like to start my presentation with uh, contents online. I will go to a short introduction, which is mainly be, will be a few slides about KWS, because I think not all of, all of you are familiar with this company. And one slide about myself. Then I will go very shortly because I think you are, all, all of you are aware about the global trends in agriculture changes. Then I will take the specific example in our very strong program, breeding program in wheat in Germany. I will talk about modern breeding technology and I will give you examples of successful application for all three crops I'm talking. Started with KWS. We are quite old company, 162 years. And the history started here in small village with name Stein Schwanzleben near Magdeburg. Magdeburg have excellent soil. This is the best soil. And the story was following. One part of the family bought the sugar beet factory. And second, mention, if we are start to make sugar beet business, we need to start the selection. And selection was started before Mendel described the law. I will show you later on. Them. Uh, was converted and new start in Einbeck. Why? 1945. Somebody know what is the year date? 1945. Exactly. And because Klein's Weisleben became on the Russian path and the British bank was involved in company, they decided to take uh, part of Gemplas, most of part Gemplas, to west part of Germany and to have new start in Einbeck. I will show you a one slide in Einbeck. Einbeck is not only the company, this is one of the oldest brewery in Germany. It's about 900 years history because the name of Einbeck in Middle Age was Einbock. And Bock beer is very, very familiar, at least in Europe. Then is, we have a couple of changes today. It's one of leading company in plant breeding and we are in about 70 countries worldwide. Here where we are operated, this is Einbeck, orange everything which is our breeding station and green where we make the testing. We have uh, three, now it's four business units. I was 20 years here in Cyrus working with wheat, rye, and barley. We have sugar beet and potato. I make always a joke everything what is growing underground growing business units. And uh, uh, sugar beet is historical, I would call. And we have maize and so on. Everything supports through research and development. And to be very clear, for us, a research and development also including breeding breeding our main innovative research and development. But we are also supporting our breeding with all new technology. And later on, I will tell you exactly what I mean. Our headquarters here, here we are in Einbeck. All facility you could see here is the KWS facility. And we put it our change our cup now for famous with our KWS logo. I already mentioned to you, I will give one slide about myself. Mark already mentioned I did my PhD in Institute of Genetics and Cytology in Belarus. Then I moved to Leibniz Institute of Plant Genetics and Crop Research in EPK. This is quite unique institute because they keep uh, after reunification on Germany. And this is unique of institute because this is one of the strongest and one is the biggest gene bank, but also five different other departments, including molecular biology, including plant breeding, a couple of us, a really unique place. A lot of research going there in Germany. Then my second scientific home, and I'm really proud, John Innes. We have re very healthy competition mark always with Cornell University. And later on, I show you because I was with Mike Gale and uh, them. As Mike, Mark already mentioned, I was for 20 years the head of breeding technology, not head breeding, head of breeding technology at KWS, and I moved from May 1st to uh, global lead scientific leader. This is the document I promised to show you, because if you look, it's 1997, and this is, was invitation by Susan. I think you was assistant professor in this time for my first seminar here. That's mean for me. I have really more than 20 years of relation to Cornell. And this is a relation is very, very positive, and I'm really proud to be again here in your facility. Going very shortly on the global trends, and I divide here 
on population growth and food security, climate change, and after local condition and stability, more is with less. Here, I think all of you know about the situation. For me, is in general, this is very important because we expect it to have the reduction of uh, agriculture area per capita about 0.2 hectare. That means we need to produce not only the best quality, but also amount of product we could fit the growing world. And what is uh, around of us? Because the difference between uh, animals breeding and plant breeding is very obvious. We are working on plant breeding always with different environments. And what you could learn from this slide, you see that we have surprisingly increasing of participation by five, seven percent until 2000. But the distribution is became very different. For example, probably not all of you are aware that Europe and specifically Germany have very horrible year this year, drought. I never expected such kind of drought as we have this year in Germany. And some farmers specifically on light soil in east part of Germany, not sent combined to harvest canola rubs because the yield was uh, just 30% of expected yield. And going to the next factor, which is uh, global warming, again, here we expected to have increased 2.5 or 4.1. And what this will be mean for us, depending on the different region of the world, and looking on that, that's one, per, one centigree of global warming could mean to shift of the zone of climatic from 100 to 500 kilometers full forwards, which is would mean again for south of France, more drought, more uh, water use efficiency variety should be all. Potential good situation for uh, East Europe, Russia and Siberia, where the good potential for, uh, for the yield. And last one, third one here is, and I think it's not only Europe, but everywhere in the world, we need to uh, look on that. And this is uh, produced the same amount at least with less water, less nitro nitrogen, less pesticide, and only the solution for us to keep biodiversity on that. I try to put here the factor which is, uh, we expect it to target as essentials. And from right side, our response from breeding point. And you could look by yourself, for example, for temperature areas, of course, heat tolerance. And you will found here is, uh, for example, root system. We are looking now. I have 20 years ago, a nice interaction with breeder, one of the famous, our Bali breeders. And he mentioned, I not care if this came from roots or from leaves. It's photosynthesis. I measure as plot and I measure the leaves, uh, sorry, yield. But now he came in back and mentioned, you was right. We need now to dissect. We need to know this from variety A, I have 5% more yield because it's a good root system. And I know from variety B, I have 5% more yield because nice photosynthesis. Because them I could combine in more precise way. Talking about current breeding targets, an example of our uh, German wheat breeding program, and here is uh, in one slide a lot of information. But uh, most important for you, the area of growth of wheat 3.2. If I'm talking about West Europe, the biggest wheat, winter wheat, and I'm talking about mainly about winter wheat, area is in France with 5 million, followed by Germany 3.2 and about 2 million in UK. This is make totally in West Europe about 10 million of uh, winter wheat growing. We are talking about number of listed varieties because the difference between United States and uh, Europe, for example, we need to have official registration. Currently, uh, farmers have the choice from 140 different varieties. It's also not easy choice. If you're farmers, how you to select is the best one. But what has happened in 91, we have 61. In 1970, we have only 38 varieties. Them, if you look here, and it's quite interesting, five biggest varieties have uh, in 1970 about 80% of acreage. Now it's only 33. If you look at uh, the percentage of certified seeds, and this is important for us as industry, is 48%, which is mean only second farmers buy certified seeds. 
some farmers pushing us and mentioned we need to increase the yield, we need to increase the resistance. And uh, if, I, if we ask, are you buying certified seeds? They mentioned not every year. Then the next, how we could uh, to create new innovation without to having money. Because in some East European country, the situation is completely different in form. Some farmers have been teaching uh, by lessons is sufficient to buy uh, the seeds once in your professional life. And this is also some part of motivation probably for you understanding why uh, the uh, company thinking about to have hybrid wheat or hybrid, hybrid barley, to have potential to return the money. But it also could be the political solution. For example, in a neighbor country of Germany, in Germany still it's okay 50%, but neighbor country uh, Denmark have about 62% of, because farmers believe that's good quality of the seeds. This is advantage. Look on this graph. And this is nice have for discussion because some people mention we have fully stagnation of the yield. This is a graph showing 1980 till 2018. It's not put at the yield this year. I would assume we will be somewhere here because extremely enormous growth. But if you look on the graph, it's increasing of the yield. We are talking about the yield about seven to eight ton of, uh, and this is industrial way of producing of, of, of wheat in Europe. But if you look on the map of the Germany, I'm from Low Saxony, another, our capital is Berlin. You will recognize is uh, overage yield is here uh, showing on different countryside. You will found some of them, which is very high, about nine ton, but you will have eight. And you will have here, here, uh, this is east, more soil, uh, more light soil. Again, here is south, and south heat, because heat by flowering. And if I'm talking about the heat, it's a different, um, uh, how it's called, uh, interpretation from different uh, growing region. Because heat here meaning the difference about 10% of the yield because during flowering time, here is much higher temperature, which is have negative influence on the yield. And knowing that we could increase. Now I move to very basic breeding. And I think most of you are very familiar with that because we need to have two crucial points, variation, if we don't have variation in one or the other way, we could close our activity and then selection. And here, genetic resources is our basis. In my couple of examples of excellent application, I will show you the very positive example of using genetic uh, resources for improvement quality or yield of variety. But be aware, majority of the breeder also not use genetic resources every year because it's a really hard job to cross from genetic resources <coughs> to, uh, to uh, achieve them the same level of yield specifically and quality. And one in my example for wheat, I will show you what the reason for. Here we have the crossing evaluation, uh, a couple of years at least, uh, places, replication. And if I'm talking about the places, it's also very different. I already mentioned in, uh, in Europe, we have three programs, UK, France, and Germany. For example, in UK, we testing material in only two locations. Anyone have uh, know the reason for? And in Germany, on 70 locations. Any idea why? Different climatic condition. In, in, in UK, the major area of wheat growing is uh, closely to Cambridge, Norfolk. And this is where the our two testing locations, extension in location. In Germany, you have seen the map. And the condition, environment condition is very different. To be able to provide for uh, official testing and specifically for farmers, verify information, we need to have more location in continental climate. And then with replication, I think is uh, with help of John Luke and many other statisticians, we remove three replication. We are happy now with two because the tools help us with that. Resistance, yield, and quality, I will come back to that. Official testing, three years in Germany, two in Denmark. And this take again six to eight year variety, and this is eight to 12 years cost. And sometimes I mention this is like ru Russian roulette. You play, gamble, and you hope you have the biggest variety. This is, will be like examination because this is a formula you should know all the time if you are a plant reader. This is our genetic gain which is selection intensivity, of course, genetic standard definition and gene generation interval. To interpret very in simple word, to make the interpretation, intensivity, bigger is better, but you know the bigger also costly. 
if you increase your program double, you will be have double possibility for success, but it will be double expensive. You need to count the option. Accuracy is very uh, good, rela positive related variance as well. And also what specifically I like to point it in this case is interval time. To be quicker, you are successful. And this is not only related with uh, plant breeding, but also related with other type of industry. But to relax you a little bit, I will explain here a joke about the interval time. Because a board of some other company, which is mainly related with chemistry, ask plant breeder wheat, for example, Mark, how long it take your, for you to develop the variety of wheat? When a week? For example. For example, when a week, maybe 10, 12 years? If it be a double budget for you to make double amount of money, would you be able to do it in five years? And this was exactly the answer. But in some chemistry, if you uh, develop pharmacy, you could do that. You put more money in beginning, you expect to have shorter, but this is plant breeding. And we are really proud because our board still understood and, and understood in positive sense plant breeding. And this is really good to have. Looking on that, I give you a little bit about uh, wheat, what we are target for. And of course, yield, yield, yield but also quality or resistance agronomic traits, specifically yield stability, because farmers like to have not every year, the high, uh, they like not only one yield, the highest yield, stable yield. And what we are looking also nitrogen, because you may know in EU we have special directive for uh, application of nitrogen, reduction of nitrogen. But uh, if you compare wheat breeding program with iceberg, this is only upper part of iceberg. If you go deeply, this is what we are selecting for. And this is make, at least my opinion, John Luke, please confirm me, the difference between maize breeding. Because in maize breeding, it was always yield, 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 and yield. Now it's became some disease important, nitrogen is important. But looking on wheat, we have really huge amount of uh, trace value. And this is very, uh, very different, okay, uh, between different countries. Later on, I show you why. But before uh, to give, because probably not all of you uh, have been inside already Mark wheat breeding program or at least Bali program. I have here a couple of slides to give you, to bring you a little bit in the field side. This is a crossing, sorry. This is a crossing. You see a lot of young and old, some of them very happy. <laughs> and uh, I could admit I, would, I also could cross wheat but I have my difficulty to cross uh, sugar beet because this is a really small flower. And next one you could see this is uh, this started. This is uh, probably you don't know. We use this is for cover through the winter for the age because the age is still quite expensive, but this is really, really powerful tool. We are very efficient to use it. And then this started selection, you will see small plots as breeders. Some breeders use only a couple of seconds to go to make the easy selection a long, uh, short, and some disease. And you know the rules. Breeder will be unhappy if it is no disease on the breeder's uh, 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 side because this gives possibility for selection. And uh, secondly, sometimes I'm sorry, Mark, in misunderstand interpret the job of the br successful breeder, meaning the job of the breeders to remove 90% of the material from one generation to the other generation. But what's the difference between successful breeder and unsuccessful? Successful breeder remove, uh, keep 10% the best. Unsuccessful breeder removes the 10% or part of them the best. And this is most important for us because here will be combined and combined will be measure everything what you make mistake or not make because here side by side comparison of the yield. And I mentioned in Germany, we have 17 location to test the yield because the condition is very different. I think is this slide will be interesting for you because look on a uh, farmer's field. And this is one hectare. Here's also one hectare. Farmer's field, farmers use about eight hours for wheat field. For breeding field, we use 600 working hours. This make big difference. I mentioned that I would explain you a little bit about the, our three program in Europe. And uh, here we are in Eindhoven, Germany. Here is our UK program based in Cambridge or Sripo closely to Cambridge. And here we are in France. Again, uh, Germany 3.2, France 5.1, UK closely to 1 million. 
this are related, but they are not overlapping. We could not make uh, breeding from UK for full Germany. We could make partly, and you see here overlapping for north of Germany. Because uh, the condition and target is in UK to have very short plant type, RHT1, for example, yellow frass, Victoria, wide sowing windows in UK we could sow in December, shortly before Christmas, winter wheat still, and in Germany we could do no that. But in Germany we need to have at least a little bit winter harvests. And for France, it's extremely important to have <coughs> PBS quality. And I would explain you in the next one, because again, three countries you have seen before. In UK, I think some of you know the quality of the bread. I would not have comment on that. In Germany, we have different type of bread. And in France, you should have at least baguette quality. Other case, your best successful variety will be not work. You need to have the quality in France. And you see the difference, for example, BP is 25, BPS is bread, 69%. In UK, divide it through biscuit type and mix type or feed type. Here is, you see the majority is going to feed type. In Germany, A is uh, export wheat with the highest level of protein, about 8%. The most famous is 49%, here is A quality. So that means all breeders like to feed the best variety in A, because it's if modern breeding technology. I already mentioned to you that uh, this company started here, KWS Foundation. This is, was cross breeding and then uh, corn breeding, uh, maize breeding, hybrid breeding started here. Later on, we have the same on uh, rye hybrid breeding and we are really proud of that. And I specifically show you a little bit in detail uh, hybrid rye breed. Cell in tissue culture. Here is molecular marker area. I think is Susan, you was pioneer on rice. First map, I was pioneer on the first Sekale Serale Rai map. And this is was area 30 years ago. We hope this is molecular marker we will have. We make the help, really. And we still have big potential on application. Smart breeding, you could term on different way. Genomic research, and here also genomic selection could be high school. Put. Phenotyping, genome editing, I will be put it also somewhere here. And here is still the question, what will be the next? And I will be really happy to have from you, specifically from young generation, what will be our next step on plant breeding. But going here, double haploid, cell culture. And we are really, really happy. And we are happy on two different levels. For example, as this is not the secret. All our uh, Bali program, and not only all majority of uh, breeders operated in Europe based on microspore culture. Because it's very easy, it's a really efficient methodology for microspore culture to make a not expensive uh, DH, and this is make easy for selection. Unfortunately, microspore culture till now not perfectly working on a wheat. It's still very high uh, independence. But we are very lucky to use answer culture, for example, which is give good potential. But both uh, microspore culture and uh, answer culture doesn't work for right at all. I mean, I have a couple of ideas. This is related with open pollinated, with lethal gene behind of, because homozygoty for I probably this is a kill, but this is a hypothesis we need to verify. Uh, them is marker assisted selection. I already mentioned, as this is not doubt, this marker is help us a lot, but specifically for targeted of uh, very important uh, genes or allelic variation. <coughs> And genomic selection, I don't need to go in any details here because I think you are one of the pioneers for application. And I'm really very thankful for you, Mark specifically, John Luke for you specifically, to help us to create idea, to help us with implementation. I specifically put here the slide with new breeding technology, meaning gene editing. And you, I not use wheat specifically, I put sunflower here. I like this as a as, uh, picture. And secondly, you put red here the possibility to create alternative uh, uh, allelic variation for that. And this is was big hope for us in worldwide, but also in Europe. But what happened? <coughs> AUG is staying for high level European court. And the problem what is all this all decision was, was made. Not only CRISPR-Cas gene editing technology consider HGMA and need to be regulated, but also all classical method of creating inducible mutation should be regulated. 
Only exception was done, exception meaning here, all product which is already exist should be not, because this is, could be put on the danger, our shelf in the, the, the mark will be half empty. Because a lot of uh, mutation breeding, radiation mutation was done in the early 60s. On Bali, for example, our traditional German uh, beer probably would be not produced because its variety was mutated. Anyway, this is decision. Is uh, We need to accept it, this decision because this is highest level of the court. We need to think what the solution could be, what the other possibility. I would give you very short, very quick now, few examples of uh, successful. And very shortly for comment for these slides, this is very important to have these pillows. Gem plus efficiency through genomic selection or other method of optimization your breeding program. And you should have the trait elements. I would not mention only traits as, as sources of GM or gene editing. Also for us, and I give the example with roots, very important to understood what is behind of, of black box and uh, enabling technology, because I think is uh, technology is also moving process, which is help us. I will not go in detail to comment what we have here. You may look here, I'm talking about precision farming. I'm talking about biologicals, which is may have potential. And we're looking for, because again, the directive of Europe, European Union to reduce the pesticide, which is positive for environment, but we need to have the alternative. Latest decision was to take neonics, which is a seed treatment elements, push really agriculture in Europe on the pressure because the disease, virus disease, is extremely dangerous on different fields of farm. Wheat, uh, Fusarium. Very shortly in Germany, we don't have uh, every year uh, the, the epidemic, but what we observe every year, we have uh, contamination with mycotoxin. And this is a problem. From early work of uh, Hermann Bustmeier, we know this is 2QTL, and I'm talking now about two mice three. This is a, the uh, already DH line, and you could see this elite line from right side. Here is already uh, two, two rounds of the crossing, but still is too long. And it's not only too long, but it's also have uh, a lot of other diseases. Mm -hmm. Only the beauty here is fusarum resistance. And this is what I mentioned, if you start to work with genetic resources, Potentially, we have, in many cases, many examples, uh, linkage. But because we have now nice tool, we have a lot of market, it's not limitation now anymore. And we could potentially think about to increase the recombination. This is give us possibility. Because one of my famous example, eye spot resistance on wheat. Mark, I think you started as your PhD properly or before PhD, I took 30 years on plant breeding to remove negative linkage track on the segment on chromosome 7E. Because segment came from Agilops ventricosa, and this took extremely long time to remove this segment. To, to this. What happened in our case? I already mentioned here two major QTL, and our idea was 15 years ago, uh, try to put uh, both QTL in very susceptible background, opus and uh, moderate. And what you could see here, in both cases, we could, and here, with both QTL, with both, this one, or the other and without QTL. We could reduce uh, the FHB ranking, but what was most important for us, we also could reduce very strongly uh, don't content. And uh, we have a nice marker for that. You could really easily follow in the program. If some, it took us at least four years because we go from Sumai 3 to uh, spring wind, wheat, which is uh, quick a cycle as winter wheat because you don't need vernalization. And we have some prototype. The reason why I telling prototype, we still not re release variety. The reason is because we still could not fully combine the highest yield with resistance. We don't know is probably some biological mechanism behind of that. Some of you have been uh, two years ago in uh, Wien, in Aust Austria, on Wien Genetics Symposium, our last, because next we will have Congress. And you maybe remember the section of FHB was six presentation. We are now talking about very small segment from Sumai 3. All six present presenters mentioned my gene is correct and, and uh, gene was described before is not wrong. Mm -hmm. We don't know what is this, this segment is potentially some interaction. We believe strongly some interaction behind of that. 
We don't know have, uh, we don't know mechanism, and we don't know how the relation of resistance with yield, because in some case, and breeders who is very experienced, not going for hundred percent of uh, resistance to one leaf disease, because they mentioned very simply, if I make the leaf survey empty from one disease, another will be empty, and some of them cost energy for plant. Going back. And this is a really nice example where we mentioned for German government, if you like to do such project, the country we will do is Canada. And this is show for us is excellently how the international cooperation could be win-win situation. Moving to hybrid rye, which is my famous subject I really like because I came from country Belarus and rye bread, they are very popular. It's very healthy. I like Germany used, Poland used, and this is very good product. Look in here, this is pre-basic seeds, but look on that, and to pay your attention, this is not like corn, because in corn you have two lines, we have a little bit complex system. And please pay your attention here, because this is exactly the seeds we are selling for the farmers. And here is important that we have fully pollen fertility restoration, because if not, anyone have idea what will happen? I saw you. It's ergot. Probably uh, most of you are not familiar with ergot, but in early 60s, pharmacy specifically collected ergot because, uh, Mark, could you help me with the alkaloid inside? Yeah. And import, important here, the pharmacy collected because it was used in early 60s against abortion. And you could assume what will be if you have too much in bread, ergot, and occasionally. And this is what's case exactly where I really like transparency. I like uh, Grüne Woche in Germany, and this is biggest exhibition of agriculture product. And specifically, I really like go through organic. And two years ago, the lady, or oh, doesn't matter who, uh, just promote the rye bread and mentioned this is most healthy bread you have ever. My next question was uh, immediately what, what variety is. She mentioned the name of old variety, and the immediately next question, what is this mutterkorn or ergot? <laughs> and this is transparency. It doesn't matter GM or organic. We should have clear description. We should be transparent enough to mention also some organic product could be dangerous. If you have too much don in your wheat organic production, it is not healthy for you. You should avoid that. Continue with that, and here is a really excellent example, because variation on resistance is very, very small. We don't have very small variation. But what is good is uh, biological competition. Soon we have enough healthy pollen grain. Fungus doesn't have too much chance. And this is competition. This is escape. Breeders will be mentioned this is escape. But breeders, professional breeders, use escape many, many, many times. They sometimes not care. This is one or the other type of mechanism important. We know the position already a long time. And what is also beauty, because we could easily, and I really like to show still old style, style or marker, to differentiate between fertile, fertile and sterile. Because as a case, breeders should make next cross, and next year we'll found this is uh, fertile or sterile. We save one year. And of course, uh, this is segment here located on chromosome four, this piece. And again, this is a uh, line, our elite, and this is sources. We use very efficiency back crossing system because to, to select correct plant, you will be a next generation. Again, you save one year. And a summary here, this is, was a hybrid 20 years before and now with our uh, current hybrid. We call this as pollen plus. And pollen plus is nothing else as use of genetic resources, molecular breeding, and smart breeding, which is, in my opinion, one of the best examples in Europe how we manage that. And Coming a little bit to the history, I already mentioned I, I uh, started with uh, mapping of rye genome, and here is Professor Vrike with his wife. This is, was five first rye map, and this is chromosome two, two markers. <laughs> then we have published with Andreas Berner in 2001 with some micro satellite with some trace, and then reference genome we started with cooperation. I will show the picture. And this is what's our page of plant journal. We improvement this year. We will have golden standard of right genome. And what has happened? Now we have 135,000, but we operated with 6,000. Did not have any limitation. But you may ask why we need this old stuff if you don't. 
it's one example I could give you because I was also involved with double one is RHC12 in wheat is not intensive is sensitive is is sensitive not insensitive and located on long of chromosome five we know already the location but now have all markers in four days we could came to candidate gene and this is beautiful perfect tool we could apply for that to verify our old story probably which has helped us now to land in for specific gene. And again, this is not job one person. We are really happy that in this project, we have four professors, Chris Caroline Schoen in Technical University of Munich, Professor Geiger, who is a pioneer of hybrid with pro, uh, hybrid RIE program in Germany. Carl Schmidt is professor in Hohenheim, also Thomas Schmidt, professor in Hohenheim. Pierre Wilde, our famous uh, RIE breeder, 35 year on breeding. But we are really proud to have a lot of young people who is with us, who learn about and who could bring this knowledge to the next generation. Bali, very shortly, I could not omit to stay without Bali. And here is a completely different example. Some of you maybe know Richard Picker, and he was all his life in New Zealand, and he worked on integration of segment from Hordeum bulbosum, which is secondary pool of Bali, to Hordeum vulgare, which is Bali, which is growing on the field. And I am personally should omit, I make mistake, I mentioned for him, Richard, nobody will use this marker. But we are very lucky that he did because here is integration in one chromosome is which is give full dominant resistance to Bali trough virus. And this is a really important disease because look on that. This is with resistance, this is without resistance. You don't have yield at all. And this is transmitted through uh, amphids. And because climate change, we have really big danger. And specifically because the European Union stopped application of insecticide. This I go very quick because again, and I'm really proud that you didn't to put your name here on. And this is again related to the formula. You remember genetic, uh, again, generation interval is very important. We started immediately, you published the, your paper, and we started on Bali. The reason is because we have the age program, we have already a lot of traits, and what we did, and this is all European material on six row Bali. I was happy this, to see this mix, mix of F different. We don't have clustering. Because breeders, and I'm talking now not about hybrids, I'm talking about uh, self pollinated crops. This means breeder privilege to immediately soon variety release to exchange material. It's very, very important. We are afraid a little bit about uh, now current situation, partly related with Nagoya, but also partly related with Bali. Here, uh, give us excellent basis to start genomic selection, and we did this. Is wind mold is the basis for winter mold quality Bali, which has became popular here, and we did for very, very, very uh, single traits. And I believe this is not problem to selection, but is problem for selection because it's related to India. Anyway, make the sto story short, going through. It's important which you know that we will not replace the field capacity, but we put the, in field the best material. We will also reduce uh, genetic gain per year, uh, to increase genetic gain per year, because we reduce the cycle. Theoretically, and I already mentioned Pierre uh, Wilde, his dream to have half year selection cycle. We're still far away from, but we have potential for and we did the same for molting barley because we decide is okay yield is important but important also molting we published this in theoretical fly genetics is october 1st which is in september in munich and you see that not because it's genomic selection it's, this is very well correlated with selection which is again very important because you know and probably don't know the assessment of molting quality is very expensive and the question always if you go to to too narrow and if you compare, compare the molting barley with fitting barley, you will see like white and black, very less genetic variation in molting barley because all molting barley breeder going for the quality. You need to have the quality, but then you don't have place for, for, for increasing of the yield. And we are really, we, this was not possible for us to do all this advantage without having uh, physical genetic map, and we are really proud, and we have new round, I don't have time to put new science publication on it, but my personal opinion, it's nice to have Chinese print as reference genome, and I'm really proud that we are also involved in 10 plus genome on it, because I think, as happened already in maize, 
we should to have at least few variety and some of them should be at least a little variety. Going click through, this also help us a lot with technology development. We use in task in a single application, we use in array, still in other application. Again, everything is related to geometry. What happened during the last 20 years? You could look by yourself here, so genetics become, uh, become genomics. Bioinformatic data integration biometrics challenges are enormous. Precision phenotyping is limited factor. And what is most important for me personally and for us, translation of genomic knowledge in breeder knowledge is essential. A few words about hybrid breed. And uh, to be aware, what we are looking, we are looking not mid-parent heterosis. You will find some publication 25%, not believe on that, because you need to compare conventional heterosis, meaning the difference between your hybrid and the best elite variety. And this is not too much more. I was really proud to be with Peter Langridge to publish very nice review. And but to this picture, this is a real picture. Uh, the students uh, to give a present to Sir Ronald Bitton in John Innocent. So this is papier mache. But I put, put it specifically as aim for hybrid meat. We are still far away from. <laughs> I would don't have probably time to go more deeply in phenotyping. We do on different level. We do on level of research. We do on level of breeding on plot, and we do on a level of the field for, for the farm. This is, I already mentioned for you very partly, big data in agriculture to uh, take environment, genome, and everything to put together. Very crucial. We're looking for the solution. We have some halfway of the solution, but we're looking for next. We are working also in plant physiology because there's still big disagreement. Some few plant physiology published in a very famous journal and mentioned only experiment we could do on control condition is experiment. We have completely different opinion. We think our experiment is the field and the question how to combine the two. We're looking and you know stay green is important for many crops, cereals, also for corn. We're looking for remobilization. This is very important for me to show you because public-private partnership is a crucial. And I think in Germany, we have very good example where we found very good solution because we know for scientists is publication is must. If we will protect it as a company publication, we have problem to cooperation, but also we bring the best material. We bring our facility, for example, uh, genotyping excellent collaborations. This is very important slide for me because I mentioned not only turnover in company, not as the amount of money. We need. For us, it's very important to keep the next generation and we are really proud to own, own Plant Breeders Academy. This is a small, but they give it unique uh, opportunity for young person. If somebody has a specific question, for, I will really open to discuss with you and give you some advice. You may have some additional information here on our portal. But also not forget about our teachers. And I'm really proud this is uh, my professor in genetics in, in plant breeding in the Academy of Agriculture. Uh, academic Hotelova, she is now 90. She is still active on wheat. And for me, this is, uh, she is also part of Encyclopedia of Wheat. Moshe Feldman, she, and uh, this is really, if you have specific questions, we have answers. Some of you maybe know Evgeny Ananyev, he was in Pioneer here for a time, and uh, Academic Kaufel. And Professor Geiger, I know a lot of about population genetics. My Gail, he was the head of John Ennis, uh, Cambridge Lab. And I'm really proud, Mark, to put you up because you also motivate me in some directions specifically uh, with, uh, with uh, genomic selection. And finish my presentation. I like to give this, you put your a little attention to look through and to look what is a very famous plant breeding in Russia, who is the author Aurora Kaptas and Bizoste. And this is the basis of GM Plus for Canada, for example. He mentioned plant breeding is not only science, but also a large extent of art of success and not content without the inspiration, creativity, and love of science. And this is my message to you. Please try to spend your time to think what's the kind of job you will be like, where the job you go make you happy. This is not easy, but this is very important in our life. And with that, I like to finish, and I, I'm very thankful for your attention, and I'm open for questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Victor. That was a very interesting presentation. If we do have a few minutes for questions. Um, I also would say uh, if people have specific questions after we're finished here, 
the plant breeding 4060 class is meeting in PL4. And I invite anybody that wants to uh, visit more with Victor to come, come over here to GL4 and, and join us. So, uh, questions? Uh, KWS went through Lysenkoism. Did that kind of shut it down or did it survive just fine? Lysenko? Yeah. I mean, they, they were operating during Lysenkoism, right? Yes. Did it shut KWS down, or how did they survive? No, I, I mean it's, it's a very complex question for me. We could talk after because I'm came, I came from a country which is, was very hardly affected by Lysenko, and uh, I have the, also the possibility in EPK, which is OMA DDR Institute, to read Lysenko paper in original in the Russian language. I mean we don't have too much affected of KWS by Lysenko. Okay. This is a short answer. But now we came in back with epigenetics. And again, what yes. I could call on, not everything what he did and what he write was wrong. And this is again message we talk with young students. Sometimes we are too conservative in our decision and scientists. Mentioned this is only white and black, but between white and black, a lot of different. And we should be ready also for compromise to think probably in different ways. No company was not affected by Lysenko. Anyone else have a question? Nick. So, uh, right now, a lot of US companies are investing a lot of uh, uh, resources in the gene editing trial. And if, uh, if the um, decision to regulate uh, in, the EU, in the EU sets precedent for maybe that happening for gene editing here. Uh, I'm curious to know uh, how did, I mean, you know, maybe in a lot of ways KWS was lucky because you hadn't made this incredible uh, financial investment in this technology, right? And they say, okay, cool, well, we can just move on. But what, what would be your, you, you think your advice to somebody who is looking at implementing this technology with the fear that in, say, 10 or 20 years, somebody might make the decision that no, actually, we're going to regulate that. Uh, I could not answer. <laughs> not because I doesn't like to give, because a lot of things is play the role. Players the role, the politician, and many other things. But as the question, we, uh, answer will be, uh, please invest in the technology, but invest not only in one technology. Yeah. I could answer also from side of pharmacy. In pharmacy, if it is from 100 projects, you have one successful, you are successful. And uh, last point to that, but if you make decision to invite or uh, invest in hybrid with or in genome editing, invest this is on long term, because in two years you could not turn the game. This should take for hybrid with 10, 15, 20 years probably. Probably we will be not successful. I am quite skeptic, but this is my personal opinion, because I'm probably well informed on, on direction of that, but I also see the potential. Because new advantage on uh, gene editing or the others and engineering solution could be help us with your hybrid. We will see. I'm positive. I have time for one last question. How long did it take KWS to um, commercialize their first hybrid drive uh, variety? Uh, the story was uh, following. The, the hybrid program was development by uh, Professor Geiger and Professor Schell. And uh, they found the sterility, and this is fully sterile. The problem was with the restoration gene. And soon they have uh, already a few, a, a couple of prototypes of hybrid, right? They give it this, this product to two companies, KWS and our competitors create a specific company for hybrid, right? And both companies start because healthy competition is also motor, it's very important. And to, uh, to register the first variety is still. 12 years. 12 years. But now we are much, much later. <laughs> you know in details. <laughs> All right, well, let's thank uh, Victor. This has been a production of Cornell University on the web at cornell.edu.